Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again and thanks for joining us for yet another edition of Alaska Weather on this Sunday, July 18th or 16th, 2017. Looking at the fire danger, not a lot of change from yesterday. Uh, really no change in the conditions up here over the interior. Still uh, hot and dry over the northeast. Not quite as hot today. Uh, most uh, locations um, in the 70s instead of the 80s. And uh, kind of high back to the west here. But again, improving with the uh, cloudier, cooler conditions in across uh, the area from Bristol Bay all the way up to about the northwest coast. Uh, north Slope, still some high fire danger there as well as uh, Susitna Valley into the Copper River Basin. And for ten, uh, yesterday, satellite imagery, again, lots of uh, sunshine, dry weather up here. Temperatures yesterday back into the 80s, especially over the eastern interior. Nice day up over the north slope, thunderstorms on the east side. Clouds, showers, isolated thunderstorms down here to the southeast. And a little bit of a break in over the southern panhandle uh, yesterday afternoon. More moisture though coming up to the north and a very weak band here across the southwest interior. Lots of clouds out over the Bering Sea and the next system out there to the west pushing eastward uh, throughout the day yesterday to about uh, just west of Adak, although they were in the sunshine this time yesterday afternoon, at least earlier in the afternoon yesterday. But uh, moving on to today, you can see that uh, system advanced eastward uh, pretty good, clearing out back to the west here. But uh, pretty good thunderstorms with this front as it pushed eastward. A uh, lot of lightning strikes uh, overnight last night and into early this morning. That uh, fading back, still some strikes going on into the early afternoon. But that's about ended now with the uh, rain and fog. Actually, the rain ended at uh, St. Paul, but still foggy and cloudy there. And uh, the front now moving into the Nikolsky area and it'll be pushing across uh, on Alaska Island this evening. Mostly cloudy over Bristol Bay, areas of clouds becoming mostly sunny after the morning, low clouds for the uh, Kenai Peninsula Cook Inlet areas, as well as Prince William Sound, and some isolated thunderstorms here from the eastern interior back to the northwest along a trough axis there, and a wet, cloudy day again here over the southeast coast. Uh, rainfall amounts heaviest over the northern areas, ranged from about uh, just a hundredth of an inch at Metlakatla to as much as uh, two-thirds of an inch falling in the last 24 hours at Sitka, while uh, just under a half an inch fell at both Juneau and up at Haines there. Uh, and that's, again, the central and northern areas where the heaviest precipitation fell. And rolling this, again, upper level low here, tracking northward. And so this whole mass of moisture right here, mostly going south to north, we're gonna be watching the entire pattern gradually shifting eastward here over the next uh, couple of days. And that's going to allow not so much this one, but another one developing out there to the west to uh, move right on in with a good 120 knot jet, west southwest jet, pushing that thing along. Looking for some uh, rain to come in across south central Alaska and up into the interior on Tuesday, Monday night and Tuesday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, uh, upper level trough here signified the surface by that uh, dashed line. Some rain, fog, and drizzle there from St. Lawrence Island <clears throat> northward to the Bering Strait. And then the next system here pushing eastward uh, currently uh, going on now developing and some more moisture back to the west there all be linking up. But over the interior today, just uh, mostly sunny skies, isolated showers over the mountainous terrain, nothing too serious, all the thunderstorm lightning strikes going on here from uh, eastern Alaska range or in Canada. And then back to the northwest along that trough there, back toward the Notak Valley, southern slopes of the Western Brooks Range, low clouds and fog, eastern Arctic coast, maybe a little bit of drizzle on the central coast there with some moisture. And the southeast coast here, again, uh, pretty showery, heaviest conditions. Again, northern areas, lighter to the south, actually getting some chlorine late this afternoon down there. 
and uh, just some clouds up along the North Gulf Coast. Winds light to light and variable. Kodiak Island all the way up into Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, as well as the Panhandle. And for tonight, uh, that next system develops more rain sliding up to the northeast and toward uh, St. Lawrence Island. Windiest conditions, small craft advisories today along the southwest coast. Stay breezy, but uh, under small craft advisories for Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, but still looking at south to north wind flow going on and mostly fair here over the western interior areas and just some very isolated showers over the mountains, otherwise uh, variably cloudy for south central Alaska. Look for the lower cloud deck to reform again here over Cook Inlet, uh, over Cook Inlet on up into Turnagon, Kinnick Arm and probably the most of the Manuska and at least the Susitna Valley by tomorrow morning. Prince William Sound becoming cloudy again. Isolated thunderstorms this evening. Eastern Alaska range 40 mile country and uh, that area shifting eastward there. So maybe some thunderstorms possibly from say, oh, Chandelar Lake eastward to possibly uh, Arctic Village. Otherwise drying out here for the Panhandle but considerable low clouds, fog, maybe some drizzle hanging off the coast with a 1,025 millibar high to the west-southwest. But it looks like drier conditions, showers tapering off and uh, continue some clearing periods, especially central and southern areas, not so much to the north. And for the uh, forecast tomorrow, that front, uh, again, most of the moisture be being directed northward to start with, although upper level high gradually beginning to weaken and pull off to the east, so that'll eventually open the door for this area of moisture here to just roll right on up uh, tomorrow night and the next day. But for tomorrow, it looks uh, wet with rain, fog, and drizzle here for the Alaska Peninsula. Much of the Aleutians, windy conditions as well, west southwesterlies and northward there along the coast. Periods of rain all the way up to the western Arctic coast, possibly as far east there as uh, maybe Atasuk or Aliktok. And then the eastern interior again, thunderstorms, central Alaska range, maybe and then here mostly over toward the eastern border areas, possibly back to the west into the Koyukuk Valley or toward the Koyukuk Valley, but whatever forms that far west will be pretty isolated. And the southeast coast not looking bad tomorrow. Looks like uh, just some possible showers there toward the eastern border areas like Stewart and uh, up here possibly Juneau, but uh, partly sunny afternoon uh, coming up there with light west-northwest breezes out along the coast. Low clouds and fog, Gulf of Alaska. Light winds continue though. And again, becoming clearing. A day to tomorrow, Monday, much like today here for South Central Alaska with isolated showers possibly developing over the mountainous terrain. Otherwise, the morning low clouds giving way to sunshine in the afternoon. And then it looks like tomorrow night, this whole mess will advance eastward here. Again, a good 120 to 30 knot jet is gonna push that eastward. Actually, a portion of it will begin to dive off to the southeast as it crosses the Alaska Peninsula, but it should look something like this by Tuesday afternoon. Pretty good shot of rain coming in Monday night and throughout the day Tuesday here across South Central Alaska. Cuscombe Valley as well, up into the west central interior areas with increasing rain, Prince William Sound, eastward to about Cordova, Valdez. Not much getting in the Copper River Basin. Sunshine from the northern Copper River Basin, eastern Alaska Range, northward all the way up to the eastern North Slope, back to the west, uh, looking really nice, but uh, showery, cloudy conditions, cooler temperatures all along the southwest coast, especially as this uh, low complex swings in closer to the coast. Looks like periods of rain and showers, uh, low clouds, fog to go along with it with the lowest conditions, definitely IFR out along the coastline up to St. Lawrence Island through the Bering Strait and also along that trough here on the western Arctic coast. All the thunderstorm activity, it looks like at this point in time, will be near or east of the border. So it may be uh, lightning strike free for all of Alaska on Tuesday and Tuesday afternoon. Otherwise, uh, mostly cloudy, risk of an isolated shower for the northern southeast coast, mostly sunny. Down to the south, Port Alexander, Prince of Wales Island, could be a pretty sunny day all the way down toward Dixon entrance. For temperatures down that way today, all in the mid 50s, although uh, Skagway did push up to 59, but lots of clouds and showers going on. 60 degrees in Yakutat, about the same in Cordova, as well as uh, uh, Whittier, 60 even, and a 59 there at Seward and Homer and Kenai, 70 degrees in Gulcana, and uh, 60s to near 70 in the Susitna Valley today with uh, Talkeetna at 69, Kodiak stuck at 55, and there's uh, Delta 
Big Delta at 67, Fairbanks up to 73, Tanana 76 degrees, and nobody reached 80. The closest I saw this afternoon was at uh, Bettles and Chalkitsik, both at 4 p.m. or at 79 degrees. They may reach 80 here in the next hour or two if they haven't already, but uh, as of four o'clock, nobody had reached 80 degrees. 62 Anatovic, upper 40s to lower 50s along the Arctic coast and mid 50s farther to the west toward Cape Lisbon. 61 in Kotzebue, 66 in Buckland, and uh, 68 there in McGrath, cooling to about 60 at Bethel. 61 though, St. Michael with 59 Unicleet, 54 uh, Nome, and near 50 there for St. Lawrence Island. Upper 40s, mid to upper 40s here for the Pribilofs today, low clouds, fog and rain, and uh, mid to upper 50s, some sunshine occurring here over the central Aleutian, especially from Adak back towards Shimia. 64 there in Unalaska, 10 degrees cooler at Cold Bay, and 58 at King Salmon. Lows tonight, uh, mid to upper 50s, 55 to 60 again, central interior up across the Yukon Flats. Uh, lower 40s, central eastern Arctic coast, otherwise near 50 on the west side up there, mid 40s. St. Lawrence Island, Bering Sea to near 50 for the Aleutians, lower 50s Peninsula, lower to mid 50s for the southeast coast. And the highs tomorrow up near 70 or into the lower 70s for one more day in the Susitna Valley. Same thing for the Copper River Basin and a day much like today here for the uh, McGrath Nikolai area and also up over the eastern interior. High pressure holding for another day before that system rolls on in on Tuesday. Otherwise, lower 60s for the Panhandle. Flying weather, lots of IFR out along and off the coast here from the Bering Strait all the way down to the Alaska Peninsula. Behind the front becoming marginal and then a lot more IFR following in behind. IFR up along the Arctic coast later tonight and tomorrow. Marginal VFR on the increase again here, especially Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound advancing into the valleys. IFR taking over the northern southeast coast there and uh, are continuing there, expanding back to about Cordova. And then by tomorrow afternoon, that vanishes, although right there, that's Yakutat, holding onto the IFR through the afternoon, improving gradually over the panhandle. And uh, looks like holding on to the marginal VFR longer tomorrow than uh, today, maybe, hopefully not, but it could happen. Lots of IFR out along the coast, pushing inland, marginal for the peninsula. And a Tuvik and Anagan, another VFR day coming up there tomorrow. Lake Clark and Merrill starting out good, gradually becoming marginal as the day wears on. Rainy, same forecast. Windy though, VFR the entire day, as well as Isabella and Mentasta, both looking good. Uh, Tanita, VFR. And Portage though, marginal VFR all day long. And for Chilkoot and White, we'll go VFR. For the freezing levels, uh, about 10,000 feet here from the central Bering Sea eastward into western Canada. It's not much of a thermal gradient going on. That's uh, off to the northeast there. You can see it dropped down to 4,000 feet there by the Great uh, Slave Lake, or Great Bear Lake, whichever one that is. And then some cooler air, but uh, it's not all that cool, 8,000 feet western bearing. And for icing, heaviest stuff here, good fetch of moisture coming in, rolling up. So possible occasional widespread moderate there coming up over the eastern Bering Sea, extending back down to just north of uh, eastern Aleutians, and then along the chain isolated, moderate, or more likely occasional rime icing, but all above 10,000 feet and even above 12,000 feet uh, before you have to worry about that. And then some mixed icing still over the eastern interior with the uh, thunderstorms. Jet stream, south to north flow again, one more day directing most of that moisture northward, but again, the whole pattern shifting eastward. 120 knot jet looks like it'll crash down the high and push that front right into the interior on Tuesday and for 9,000 feet. Uh, westerly flow, pretty good here, 30 to 35 knots along the Aleutians. Takes a turn to the north, up to 40 knots out of the southwest here with this trough axis, and south to north flow, 25 to 35 knots along the west coast, all the way up to the Arctic coast. Lighter, more westerly here, 5 to 15 over the interior, down into the Gulf of Alaska. Nice northwest breeze, 15 to 20 along the panhandle. 3,000 feet, about the same. Uh, both speed and direction, some minor differences south to north here, 35 to 40 along the southwest coast. It's just a little farther east than today and uh, 15 to 30 knots inland, turning west, of course much lighter, 5 to 15 central eastern interior, west northwest 5 to 15 to the panhandle, southeast 25 maybe on the eastern Arctic coast, but most of that flow will stay just offshore. And for turbulence, uh, 
occasional light tightly moderate chop, all of the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, and even the Pervolos of those southwesterlies at about 25 to 35. Uh, at three to 9,000 feet and occasional moderate chop. They're pretty likely for the Southwest mountains here as well as the Nolato Hills over Eastern Norton Sound. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder and joining me once again is Cindy Preller. She is the Tsunami Program Manager for the National Weather Service in Alaska region. Thanks for joining us again, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. We're talking about tsunami awareness and safety here in Alaska especially and one of the things that has been uh, your, one of your main focuses is uh, the Tsunami Ready Program. What is that and uh, how do Alaskans find out more? Awesome. Yes, Tsunami Ready is a National Weather Service hosted program mm -hmm. in uh, partnership with Storm Ready. Okay. And it is a program that we uh, conduct with our partners in the state, mm -hmm. but it's mostly community driven. So if okay. a community wants to become Tsunami Ready, well, the first thing they need to do is get a hold of me or, or their local WCM at a weather mm -hmm. forecast office okay. or their Tsunami uh, team at the state level. So, and this is something that's a NOAA grant, so there's money available to help encourage the preparedness at, at the local level there in the city or the, uh, the village. Yeah. What are some of the places that have done this already? Oh, our oldest tsunami ready city is Seward, Good. you know, but also Sitka, Homer, Valdez are the, you know, the main players, but we've got, mm -hmm. we've got several tsunami ready communities that I'm very proud of. It takes several years to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And so a few of the things that they do is um, the tsunami risk will be assessed by okay. someone like me or another scientist will help find out, you know, really what their probability is. Mm -hmm. We'll create an inundation map, an evacuation map. Okay. They'll have a mitigation plan. Um, we will set up uh, some partnerships with the schools, yeah. uh, make an evacuation shelter, and then they need to practice. But it is the city that owns the program, really. Mm -hmm. It's up to them. And many cities would like to have sirens, and so we help them get those. And you know, and they practice. They have to practice. Sure. So let's say I'm driving into a place like Seward that's tsunami ready. What are some of the things I should look for as maybe a visitor, that no, so I know maybe where I need to go or can be more aware of my tsunami risk? Absolutely. The tsunami ready signage is, is really blatant. It's this, okay. you know, blue and white curling wave sign and, mm -hmm. and there's different shapes of signs that will show you if you are in the hazard zone or mm -hmm. where the evacuation routes are and when you're out of shelter. Okay. So this is a, a multi-step process that helps the uh, residents be more aware of their own risk but then also prepare for when that risk arrives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, many communities um, uh, sound their sirens daily, some sound, sound them weekly, you know, okay. to make sure everybody knows what they mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's often drills. We have an annual drill once a year. We have Tsunami Awareness Preparedness Week. Mm -hmm. And that's a good time for each community to, to do some exercising. Okay. And is this a program that is unique to Alaska? Absolutely not. It's national. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, all over the country, you'll have the same signage. So it's, it's consistent. Good. So if I'm taking the kids to California, I should be able to see something familiar. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, some communities hesitate because they think it'll discourage tourism. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to tell those communities that what they're actually doing is they're encouraging responsibility. Sure. The tsunami is going to happen. Right. And it's going to hit every coastline. So, you know, it's, it's not about when. It's, mm -hmm. It'll be any time. So the fact that they're showing tourists that they are making steps to be prepared for this, I think, would encourage people to want to stay there. Right. And that would be no different than, say, you or I visiting the Midwest where we know there's going to be really bad thunderstorms and maybe there's a risk for tornadoes. We're, we're aware of that risk when we go there. Absolutely. If I see a sign for a tornado shelter, I'm going to remember that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're just doing a better job of being more prepared with something that's bound to happen again. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Where can people uh, go again to learn more about the Tsunami Ready program here in Alaska? Well, one, there is a Tsunami Ready website. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just Tsunami Ready Google and that'll tsunami get ready. you there. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And then probably the best person for people to contact is their warning coordination meteorologist okay. at their local weather forecast office, which is Anchorage or Juneau most likely. Okay, all right, so most of the folks along the Bering Sea coast, again, are not at a huge risk for tsunamis. No, nope, they don't need to worry about it. Okay, Thank very you. good. But always learning to be uh, prepared no matter where you are in Alaska, uh, no matter what the risk, always a good step, and tsunami is a major player in that, as we well know from events like 1964. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alaskans are resilient. I really believe in them. Very good, very good. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for joining us again, and uh, please make an effort to uh, learn more about the Tsunami Ready program in your village and uh, town if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be back with Cindy again uh, next time to talk more about the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska. We actually have a group of geologists working for the National Weather Service, so scratch your head on that one, and we'll join you next time. I'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Packs. <music>Welcome back. Uh, marine forecast wise, light winds west nor or no, yeah west northwest, mostly northwest here, along the central and south coast, only 10 to 15 knots. Seas uh, laid down pretty good, four to five feet or less. Lynn Canal, northern Lynn Canal, south 20 tomorrow, four foot seas, uh, maybe 15 knots or Stevens Passage, variable for Frederick Sound. Really slight seas here over the inside waters, down to two feet or less. So pretty slight with light winds. Then on Tuesday, uh, we'll go from variable to northwest, same speed there for Clarence Strait. Out along the coast, northwest, 15 knots, uh, no change in the sea heights, all still three to four feet, turning west to 15 on the north coast, no change in the forecast for Lynn Canal. And Prince William Sound, as well as the North Gulf Coast, uh, another really light, laid down variable wind day. These seas out here, uh, two feet, um, uh, don't get too much lower than that out in the uh, Gulf of Alaska, but that's what's in the forecast. Southeast 15 here for the Barren Islands, kick up to about 20 knots for Kachemak Bay. And uh, of course, those seas go up to six feet. Southerly is 15 for Kodiak Island, Shelikoff Strait, Cook Inlet, same forecast. South winds 15 knots, seas at three feet. For Tuesday, uh, we'll swing those winds around to the northeast here, north of the forelands, but only at about 10 knots. And uh, seas still laying down at two feet. Light southeast, Prince William Sound, seas two feet. And now some 15 knot winds enter the picture here on south southeast winds. And the seas come up, respond a little bit there, three to four feet. And then small craft advisories here for the Barren Islands, east increasing to 25, as well as the east side of Kodiak, southerly's up to 25. And that's starting to bring those seas back up to six feet. Shelikoff Strait still light, but Kachemak Bay or Kamishak Bay, southeast 30 knots. So that's a pretty good increase there, those seas coming up to nine feet. For Bristol Bay, southeast at 20, and small craft advisories here on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, 25 knots, sea seven feet. South side, south at 20 knots, with seas only at four feet. And then for Tuesday, uh, south of the peninsula, westerlies from Cape Sarachev all the way up to Sitkanak, 15 knots, but uh, from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, more like 20. And southwest 15 for Bristol Bay, back along the north side of the peninsula. Eastern Aleutians, Fox Islands, uh, southwest 25, small craft advisory, sea seven to nine feet. Same forecast here for the central Aleutians, pretty uniform wind pattern all the way back, but falling back under 20 knots. So it loses small craft advisories here over the far western Aleutians. Those go south on Thursday and drop back to 15 knots. And then we've got westerlies uh, hanging on 20 to 25 for Adak and Atka, all the way to about Nikulski, falling back to 15 to 20 knots, mostly for Alaska Island with five to seven foot seas, up to nine feet here uh, south of the uh, Adak Atka area. And for the southwest coast, tomorrow, south 20 to 25, with a small craft advisory south of Nunavak Island, and then 30 knots out of the south for St. Lawrence Island there with six foot seas, small craft advisories out also, or in, in the forecast here for the Pribilof Islands, southwesterlies 25, seas at about seven feet, a little lighter up uh, near St. Matthew Island, the Northern Bering Sea, call it southwest at 20, seas running at about six feet. And then for Tuesday, those turn northwest and pick up to 25 knots, and that will definitely be west of St. Matthew Island, those uh, higher winds and seas becoming west. And then southwest here for the, the uh, coast, Nunavak Island at about 20 sea seven feet, and that same pattern 
extending back across the Pribilof Islands and for St. Lawrence Island, a lighter wind day coming up for Tuesday and what you have tomorrow with those 30 knot winds. Tuesday falling back, staying the same direction, but coming down to about 20 knots, sea subsiding to four feet. Up along the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast tomorrow, east winds, 25 knots, five foot seas, small craft advisories there and uh, central coast, small crafts there also and uh, four foot seas. 20 knots out of the southeast here on the west side, turning southerly from uh, Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, south 25 foot seas, small craft advisories from Wales up to Cape Thompson for 25 knot winds, mostly out of the southeast here, seas at about five feet. And then for Tuesday, uh, lighter winds still from the southeast, but down to 15 knots, seas subsiding, variable to northeast or east northeast, 15 here for the uh, western capes and uh, south 10, so really laying down on the west side and even the east side coming down, but we're hanging on to a small craft advisory there for the uh, stream eastern coastline with 25 knot winds and seas hanging at around six feet. And for tonight, uh, best chance of rain here from the uh, say Point Lay westward south through the Bering Strait, Western Seward Peninsula into this uh, frontal complex that uh, keeps a lot of IFR out over the Bering Sea and along the coast with uh, more rain entering the central Aleutians. Pretty fair over the interior, decreasing thunderstorms. Eastern interior, decreasing showers over the Panhandle. And for tomorrow, look for partly sunny, with just a risk of a shower toward the eastern border for the Panhandle. It's not looking too bad there. A day much like today, south central Alaska. Really much of the interior rain making headway eastward here as strong westerly flow begins to break the ridging down both at the surface and aloft that's uh, kept us dry for a while. So on Tuesday, that front will push eastward and a good shot of rain coming in across south central Alaska, extending back to the northwest along the frontal boundary, but the eastern and northeast staying warm and dry with clearing behind the front Bristol Bay. More rain coming onto the southwest coast and another nice day here, partly to mostly for the these forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.